All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at the dot product. Uh, let's go along with section 2.3 from the OpenStax Calculus 3 textbook. We're going to try to define the dot product of two vectors, apply this to geometry and to the physics concept of work. And uh, most important, we're going to talk about the projection of one vector onto another. So the notation of vector dot product is a little dot, kind of like you might see used in multiplication. Um, uh, because this is a type of multiplication between two vectors. So u dot v, and um, what you do is you multiply the vectors component-wise. So multiply their first components, multiply their second components, uh, and then you add them together. Uh, and if they're in three dimensions, you multiply their third components and add them all together. Now this does result in a scalar, and so it's sometimes referred to as the scalar dot product. Uh, the vector product uh, is a cross product, and we'll talk about that in the next video. So here's an example of the dot product between two vectors given in component form. Uh, notice that we multiply their first components, 3 and negative 1, then their second components, 5 and 3, and then their third components, 2 and 0, and then those three products are added together to get a total of 12, which is a scalar result. If you're given the vectors in terms of the basis vectors i, j, k, same idea, just pull off the components and multiply them together, uh, and then add those results up. Now the vector dot product is commutative. It is distributive with a vector sum or difference. It is associated with scalar multiplication. Uh, and if you do the dot product of a vector with itself, it's equal to the square of the magnitude of that vector. Now the vector dot product relates to the angle between two vectors uh, according to this formula. The dot product of u and v, or u dot v, is the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times the cosine of the angle between them. And you can solve this equation for the cosine of the angle uh, just by dividing both sides by magnitude of u and magnitude of v. Uh, we will use this sometimes to find. So if you want to find theta, uh, you can do inverse cosine of this dot product divided by magnitudes. Uh, here's an example of doing just that. Let's say we had the vector i, j, I plus j plus k and 2i minus j minus 3k, and I wanted to find the angle between them. So I would do the dot product in the numerator, and that gives me a negative 2. And then I look at the magnitudes uh, at the bottom, and I get square root of 3 and square root of 14. Uh, and then multiply those and get square root of 42. And then I do the inverse cosine or arc cosine of that, and you get some number. Of course, it's going to be an irrational number, so we just leave it like that to keep it exact. Why don't you take a minute to find the angle between these two vectors? Pause recording if you need some time. And you should have gotten that the correct answer is i over 2. And remember when you're using calculators to find the inverse sine, cosine, tangent, or other inverse trig functions, sometimes what the calculator gives you isn't always what you want. And of course, between any two vectors, uh, there are going to be more than one angle, right? Uh, and so if you drew these vectors, you know, you have one like that and one like that. And of course, um, answer a pi over two, that is that is that angle, right? Um, but there's always going to be the other angle, in this case, three pi over two. And so both of those end up probably working as a solution. Um, so if you're not told, then usually you go with the smaller angle, the interior angle of these, um, if you have the choice. Now, if we think about the connection between the directions of the vectors and the result of this dot product, well, if the vectors are pointing in the same direction, then that angle between them is zero. Uh, and cosine of zero is when the cosine function is at its maximum of one. Uh, and so the dot product of two vectors is maximized when they are pointing in the same direction. And in that case, it is just equal to the product of their magnitudes, uh, which is interesting. And then uh, as they go to being at right angles, it just slowly decreases. Uh, and then, of course, if they are at right angles, then the dot product should be zero. So if we imagine going from u and v pointing in the same direction to now there is some angle between them. Uh, now we have that cosine of theta, which is less than one. Uh, and so it's going to be something less than the magnitude of u times v, right? u times v times some number less than one. 
This is going to be a little bit smaller than if they were pointed in the same direction. Uh, and this is as small as it gets uh, if u and v are pointed uh, at right angles to each other, because then you have cosine of 90, which is 0. And so it doesn't matter how long they are, the dot product of perpendicular vectors is going to be 0. Uh, now, if you keep increasing that angle to where they're pointed in opposite directions, um, then you get back to cosine being uh, negative 1. And so here, this is the same uh, absolute value of the product, the magnitudes, but now it's a negative number. Uh, so I guess technically this is the minimum value of the dot product if they're pointed in opposite directions. All right, we're going to talk about the projection of V onto U. So this is denoted with PROJ, the abbreviation of projection. And then the vector you're projecting is the big vector that's listed. And the one you're projecting onto is the little subscript one. So this is the projection of V onto U, right? So you'll be careful when you read this uh, that you kind of go from projection to the big one and then back down to the little one. And what that looks like is that we take a vector V and then we take a vector U and we would uh, sort of draw a line down uh, at a right angle to U and we'd look at the component of V that's in the direction of U. So the magnitude of this projection is the same as the magnitude of that component of V. Uh, and the direction is the same direction as the vector u. And we can use that to derive what the projection is. So let's start with the magnitude. Uh, we know that v has magnitude uh, absolute value bars of v. Uh, and then if we say we do this angle as theta, uh, then we talked about before the connection between the components uh, and a vector that you take the magnitude and multiply by the cosine of the angle to get that horizontal component. So you think of u as being kind of the horizontal part of this, and then perpendicular to u would be the vertical component, uh, which we don't really need for this. So magnitude of v times cosine of theta is the magnitude of this projection vector. But we don't really want theta in our formula. So we're going to use the formula from before uh, that relates the cosine to the dot product. Right? Remember, a cosine of theta is u dot v over magnitude of u times magnitude of v. So we just saw that earlier in this presentation. Uh, and then if you look at this uh, formula, you can actually cancel these magnitudes of v because there's two of them and they're the same, and one's in the top of the fraction and one's in the bottom. So the simplified version just has u dot v over u. So u dot v over u is going to be the magnitude of this projection. Uh, but what about the direction? So the direction is the same direction as the vector u, um, but we wouldn't use u because it has its own magnitude that would mess things up. Instead, we use the unit vector for u, which we're denoting with u hat. So this gives you the direction of u. This gives you the magnitude that we just derived on the previous slide, and that is your projection. Now, this isn't the way the formula is usually presented, uh, because the situation usually is that you know the vector v and u. And so uh, you can write u hat in terms of u over magnitude of u. And then you can combine these magnitudes of u and get magnitude of u squared. So these are all equivalent, uh, but this bottom one is how it's usually presented in a book. Um, though we will go through the methodology, I like to actually you know, calculate it this way because it makes more sense in terms of what we're actually calculating. All right. Just a reminder, this presentation by Matthew Watts contains images and text from the OpenStax Calculus 3 textbook by Jed Herman and G. Strange, CC by S N C S A.